Would it be crazy to you if what? while you're in rehab, I met Jennifer Aniston? It's not crazy. It's a betrayal. <laughs> I'm just putting this out right now. Yeah. If you bring one of your sidekicks from the next fucking month to meet Jennifer Aniston, I will lose <laughs> my shit. 100%. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Mudwater. I love Mudwater because sometimes I'm looking for a coffee, but I don't want coffee, if you know what I mean. And Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs with a seventh of the caffeine as a regular cup of coffee. You get the energy without the anxiety, the jitters, or the crash of coffee that we all get midday. I love it before a workout. Each ingredient has added for a purpose. They got cacao and chai for mood and microdosing of caffeine. Lion's mane, which we all love for an alertness. Uh, cordyceps to help support physical performance. Chaga and Riaisha. To support your immune system. I don't know if if I can't say it, you know it does great stuff for your immune system. Turmeric for soreness. Dude, Rogan introduced me to turmeric. I'm addicted. This shirt's turmeric. And cinnamon for antioxidants. The taste is phenomenal. The flavor's amazing. I absolutely love it. Mud water is 100% USDA, USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, Whole30, and kosher. Visit mudwater.com slash bears to support the show. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash bears and use the code bears at checkout for $5 off. Hey guys, super excited to announce the Dillons are back. My signature flip-flop from Free Waters is now available April 14th. That's Wednesday, April 14th. They are available. Go to freewaters.com to get yourself a pair I normally wear a size 12, but I wear a size 11 in these just to give the sizing right. Go to freewaters.com or go to my Instagram. You can swipe up. I'm sure I got a link there. They're fucking awesome flip-flops. And just so you know, this is how long they last. This is the sole to the ones I got last year. This is the sole to these. These things are going to last forever. I hope you enjoy them. Get yourself a pair. Oh, by the way, they have women's pairs now. So they have women's pairs. Leanne's size flip-flop. So get yourself, a, get your wife a pair. Freewaters.com. Don't worry. He's not white. I can't wait to start booking this show with other people. That's all I'm saying. I have You're a not lot, available. I have, a lot, I have a lot of big guests coming. You are not available. Guys, enjoy the show with Tom and I now, okay? Because we're doing different things. Oh, we certainly are. Go ahead and tell people what you're <laughs> no, doing. No, I'm not. I'm Why? not. No. <laughs> Why? No, because, because you're doing your own thing, man. I'm you're not doing, your own doing thing. my own thing. <laughs> I am not doing my own thing. I feel like Roger Clinton right now. <laughs> Hey, you're doing very exciting things. Stop, and I'm, stop. No, you're subject. doing very exciting subject. things. Very exciting things. I'm very happy for you. I think it's going to be amazing. But I'm going to rehab, everybody. After your rehab stint, I'm, I'm, I have to try to bank these so that while you're in rehab and while I'm traveling and moving, that these still come out. I know. And oh, yeah, that's right. You're going to move. Yeah, and you're getting all, Maybe you just don't move. That's something I've thought about. Uh, it's really annoying to move. I know, and like, like, what do you have? Like, how do you do the whole sell your house, buy a new house? What do you do in the middle team? Like, just drive? No, I'm staying in a hotel for a minute, and then yeah, it's really with annoying. your kids. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Oh, was the last time you did that. It's a nightmare. So wait, you're moving? When you are you moving before your birthday or after your birthday? Because I got to figure out delivery of your present after my birthday, and I won't be home for my birthday. So how do I do your present? Well, as soon as I get back. But I'm not gonna. I'm, I don't get out of rehab until like fucking July. I don't know, man. You got to coordinate it somehow. It's coming up though. I know April fifteenth, sixteenth, same same. Yeah, I do midnight on the fifteenth. <laughs> okay, I'll be gone that day too. Wait, where are you gonna be? I'll be in Kentucky. Doing what? I just love horses, dude. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be oh doing my shows. god! Doing what shows. if I bought you a horse for your birthday? That would be so upsetting. <laughs> I would immediately call <laughs> Whitney and be like, "I got you something." <laughs> There's another one to rescue. I know we don't talk much, but I got you a horse. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. No. Don't get me a horse. Oh. I got a good present for you. Really? Yeah. Really hard to get present too. Is it loud? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's allowed. You're going to like it. <laughs> you're going to like it, and your boys are going to like it. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, you're going to like it. Christina's going to be like, oh, I don't care. Yeah, that means it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna Dude, be good. Isn't I it? wish I can't even tell you, but you got to remind me off my, because because of the fact that they, that they listen. A friend of mine told me the best 
worst gift that his wife gave him that is the funniest fucking thing. Oh my God. It's so disappointing. For real? <laughs> I can't say anymore. Yeah. Why? Because it, it, I can't, because they listen. <laughs> they probably already figured it out. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh my God. This was fun while it lasted, though. It was, man. We had a lot of good time. Remember Jennifer Aniston? We got her to hit us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was fun. Kate back and sell stuff. You know what's so funny? Would I it was... be crazy to you if what? while you're in rehab, I met Jennifer Aniston? It's not crazy. It's a d- betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just putting this out right now. Yeah. That is a betrayal. How is it a betrayal? Because that's how this whole thing started is we made a promise that if we ever met Jennifer Aniston, we would bring the other person. If you bring one of your sidekicks from the next fucking month to meet Jennifer Aniston, I will lose my <laughs> shit. Uh, by the way, if, I swear to God, I swear to you all my children, if I'm in a restaurant, Jennifer Aniston comes up, sees yeah, me, yeah. walks over and says, I just want to say hi. I'm going to go like this. I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> I can't talk to you. I'm, I'm so sorry. I have to cancel you in my eyes. Yeah, because... Because I made a promise to my best yeah, friend that yeah. I would meet her with him. Well, I would, I would, never, um, I would never betray you, okay? Do people plan out rehab like a month out? Like, I'm going to rehab next month. I think they um they they usually kind of go in the moment. Is I'm it, it's kind of a spur, yeah. <laughs> spur of the moment decision. Yeah, I mean, I think some people try to go. I'm going to go next month, and then you just never make it. <laughs> How many of our fans do you think get the joke sometimes Which versus joke? don't? Just jokes that we make, like like when I go. I think um, most people get the joke. I bet there's some that don't. Of course, some do. that, that it's go, obvious that go like I, it's it's interesting what this show means to them when like the kind of person that watches this and goes that really believes everything and goes fucking Bert is not stronger than Tom. Like, and then you're like, yeah, no shit. Fuck face. His dad's a power lifter. He's been power lifting his whole fucking life. <laughs> not a power lifter. Your dad was a fucking power lifter. He was an for, Olympic lifter. He was an Olympic lifter for the state of Peru. Yeah. <laughs> five, four, five, six and under. That's and, right. That's right. <laughs> but, but you know, all those movements. So you yeah. have been power lifting. Like you, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'm familiar to like in an amateur way with the sport because I was around it so much. Yeah. I never dedicated myself to it. I never was like fully invested in it. So I, I don't have crazy you can, strength or anything. You can power lift. You can out power lift any comedian the same way I can out golf any comedian. I cannot out power lift any comedian. <laughs> you said that earlier. You said, no, I did not. okay, let's name the p- comedians you think you could out power lift. Sebastian, easy peasy. Okay. Well, first of all, we're talking about when I'm healthy. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not now. Week. Not now. Not no. Uh, let's name one comic you don't think you could outpower lift. Oh, Joe, a bunch. that's it. Some yeah. uh, Shab. Okay, okay. Um, I bet you there's there's really strong dudes. Uh, I bet you Godfrey's strong as fuck. I bet you text him see what he power lifts. Um, I bet you uh, is it deadlift? Dead, let's just do, out deadlift. Out deadlift. Yeah. I mean. The, I'm sure there's people that like that's part of has been part of their routine and sometimes it's it's surprised like I've been around like 170 pound guys that are insanely strong so it's not just like really big, yeah yeah if you're, if you're like into it like if you're people who really make that part of their life yeah they get really strong man and it's it's stunning to see a guy that that small like 175 pull 500 or more it's crazy yeah and, so, and saying Georgia did her body weight Georgia did. Yeah, she. We were fucking around, and I was, and our trainer was there, and I was like, George, let's see what you can deadlift. And she was like, Uh, well, like, come on, just see. And she was like, Uh, and then we're like, Well, okay, if you're not weak, she was like, I'm not weak, Dad. I can do it. Yeah. And so she went and did like, you know, did the bar, did the bar with tens, did the bar with twenties, starts doing it, and then all of a sudden we're like, How much do you weigh? She was like, I have no idea. Which is, I was so nice to hear that your daughter isn't bulimic. Yeah. And you're like, you don't know how much you weigh? Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't know? You don't care how much you weigh? Oh, my God. <laughs> Victory. That's a big win. Dodge the bullet. Isla, yeah. what do you weigh? 86 pounds. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and so. Um, is that so, what she weighs? No, I don't. She's Isla's tiny. Isla's. Isla went. Oh, never mind. Anyway. So, I got fucking. I got to learn. I feel like I'm biting my tongue a lot lately. Why? I don't know, and I don't like it. It's because I'm always wrong. Like, I'm living in a world right now where I'm always wrong. Where everything I think, I go, I'm wrong. Like, yeah. I, even for thinking thoughts, I go, 
Shouldn't have thought that. Oh, thank God I didn't say that out loud. I think it's all getting to you, man. That's why I don't tweet anything. I don't tweet anything anymore. I don't like anything real. Only thing I tweeted the other day, and fucking Bill Burr's wife lit me up, was uh, uh, I want hot mustard chips, potato chips. She lit you up about that? She was like, I, I go, hey, how about I thought you? you were going to say something way more inflammatory. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no Asian hate. Like, that kind of thing. <laughs> no. Can I tell you? Uh, even this is how measured I am on Twitter. I swear to you, I wanted to tweet out, I want Chinese mustard potato chips. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, except for the, all the shit's going on in the Asian community. I was oh. like, just keep the word Chinese out. I don't, why, why even be a white guy and tweet that you like Chinese mustard? Like, don't, and then, cause you know, someone's going to be like, oh, why has it got to be Chinese mustard? And you're like, yeah, oh, cause it's, it's the best. Yeah. Cause it's spicy as fucking shit. And it's a also little, the one I'm familiar with. Yeah. And it's, if that Chinese mustard, when you get like uh, uh egg rolls with that little bit of sweetness, yeah. that little bit, that whatever that pink sauce is. Yeah. Yeah. Whew, that as a potato chip would be so good. Mm-hmm. I'm really thinking I, I might have missed my calling in, in like the snack food category. I can see that. My mouse walked. Wait, what did his wife say to you? I said to her, I said something about, hi, how about you follow me back on Twitter? And she goes, why, can I, so I can read stupid chip recipes? And I go, huh, I thought that would be a good idea. And she goes, oh yeah, I want mustard potato chips. And I go, wait, wouldn't Chinese mustard potato chips got work be good? And she goes, oh, actually they would be good. I wonder if she followed me. Let's see if she followed me. Let's see. I don't think she did. Dude, how much of a nightmare was the bad friends thing? I will I will tell you. She follows me. Um, I will tell you, it's I don't whatever for whatever fucking reason, when you start laughing, my laughter quota, quotient, quotient, whatever it's quotient, yeah. Quotient yeah. goes up so fucking high for when you start laughing. Like I'm an easy laugh, right? Like I can laugh easy. But when you start laughing, I can't, I can't hold it in because I watch you, you do this thing when you laugh where you, you get really excited and your face is all red mm-hmm. and your eyes are red and you go, <laughs> when she didn't know the game we were playing, yeah, yeah. that is the hardest I've laughed all week. Did you I, know that the first song was a real song? No. Yeah. For real? Yeah. The daddy, why did you die? Daddy, daddy, where are you? Yeah. Oh, I thought, no, I didn't know that. That's a real song. From who? From Bobby and, and, and Andrew. From Bobby's dad dying. Daddy, oh, for real? Die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, his dad's dead. Yeah. Dude, you want to talk about cancelable? The outtakes on the cabin? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, me, him, and Bobby doing scream therapy and uh, trying to communicate to their fathers, and then they just take over the roles of each other's fathers. You and... I stayed out of it, but him and Bobby are... Who's him? Donnell's oh. playing Bobby's father. Oh, Bobby. Oh. And I'm like, hey, guys, you can't do that. And, he's, and Bobby's like, damn, Donnell! And I'm like, okay, neither can you. It, but it's so fucking funny. It's so fucking funny. I'm so... I'm, so, I, I'm afraid... Can I tell you, I actually, like, someone said something funny to me that was horrific yeah and i started laughing and georgia looked at me like and i'm like okay if you guys are gonna start fucking regulating laughter yeah then i don't know what fucking world i belong in because yeah. i laugh at fucked up shit of course but i mean that's part of like being a kid too is seeing your parent joke or laugh and, and being like the fuck are you laughing like, oh she, she tells me my... she'll tell me the dad that's not funny actually that's not funny and i'll be like it's kind of funny which one of us is a professional here sweetie I've said that to her. You like your cell phone? Oh, I've said that to her. Yeah. You like your teeth? Yeah. That was dick jokes. Yeah. It was a joke about your mom sleeping and me sliding my dick in her mouth while she was sleeping and going, you're streaming. I don't think you need to be that specific. (laughs) You could just say it's a joke. That's That's about me eating your mom's pussy and she farted, huh? You like that? She farted on my chin. I'm going to shit in my mouth. Scream fire in the hole if you're going to do that, bitch. That's what I said. And then you got braces. (laughs) And then you got braces. Uh, that's, story, studio, that's a joke about me studio. fucking your mom for doggy style because she was sick. I didn't want to <laughs> cover the wall, bitch. <laughs> their studio sucks, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Their studio is very like is very uh, Death Squad two thousand four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, we had the Ice House fucking vault annex room. Uh, I remember that was the first. That Death Squad studio was the first studio we went like where yeah. you went, and it's so funny, like. I would love to know where the technology stood at the time. 
Because I bet it's still past what Bobby and Andrew are at. Yeah. Like, it, like, because what's Red Band doing? He's in Austin. And they're doing shows. And they're doing, he does oh, he's Kill doing... Tony and he does Secret Show. Like okay, he's, he's still doing all his podcasts. All the stuff he was doing here. Yeah. Nice. nice. He shaved his head. He did? Yeah, did you see that? Go to pull up Red Band's uh Did he have a full head of hair? He has, he has a great head of hair. You know, Brian, I got to be honest with you. Brian is one of the better looking dudes that I know. He's a good looking man. Okay. Uh, that's not it. And that's not it. Can you go, I think go up, go up. It's got to be one of, I guess he grew his hair back very quickly. <laughs> go to, go to his stories. Go to his stories. Go to his stories. Go to his stories. Okay. Kill Tony. 500 sold in less than 24 hours. Good job, Red Band. There we go. That looks like Duncan Trussell painting. What's that? That's his lady? Yeah, him and his chick live oh. in VR. Jesus. Wow. No, he shaved his head. I'd, I'd FaceTime him, but I'm certain he's asleep. Definitely. Definitely asleep. Yeah, he, that was a, that was the most... I mean, I've, we've talked about it before, but one of the most fucking mind-numbing things is the way Bobby can sleep. I just... It's so ins- dude, insane. I was up at 6 o'clock this morning. Yeah. I was up at 6 o'clock, got in. I, I took a shower. I love showering before I work out. Really? Yeah, I you're love showering. S- you're so goddamn weird. I like a hot shower before I work out because then I get in the shower and I start sweating immediately. Okay. And then I sweat. And it's a clean sweat. Yeah. It's like not a dirty, like yeah. grimy sweat. It's a clean sweat. Mm-hmm. Dude, I killed it this morning. Got yeah. on the treadmill. Yeah. I've had this new theory about about if I do, I'm trying to like learn just a bottle of wine, like just a bottle of wine, at night, at night, just uh, like under a bottle. It's the Johnny Depp diet, where Johnny Depp on his sets would get these really expensive bottle of wines and then he'd get to the end and he'd just put a cigarette out in it and then be like, I'm done with that. And it was under a bottle of wine. It's 130, 23 calories for a bottle of wine. I can't be right. That's, That's for one serving. It's yeah, a glass of wine. Anyway, I did under a bottle of wine last night, watched the Von Erichs on, um, watched the do- documentary on the Von Erichs. You know the Von Erichs? Mm-mm. Big Russell. You're a big wrestling fan, right? Yeah. Yeah, big <laughs> And uh, and then uh, so I went, alarming. And then I went to grown went to sleep by myself. Dude, the Von Erichs were the shit. Yeah, Carrie Von Erich. Look at that fucking stud. Look okay. at him with his jawline. Were they, these are brothers. Yeah, Kevin, Carrie, and Mike. I actually followed their sons, Ross and Marshall. Where did you Kevin's watch sons this? last night? What? That's Dad right there in the front. Yeah, Fritz Von Erich. Ah. Fritz Von Erich was a Nazi. Do I have? No, hold on. Let me phrase that. Let me rephrase that. That came out wrong. Fritz Von Erich played a Nazi. Oh, he that's played, a really different sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very different sentence. He played a Nazi as a wrestler. He, was in, he would come in in the 40s dressed as a Nazi, and he ran all of Texas wrestling. And he had these fucking gorgeous boys, and, they, uh, and, they, and he just kind of groomed them to be the, the, the champs. That's Lance. Get rid of Lance. How do you know about these guys? Because I was really into wrestling when I was a kid. I didn't realize I was into wrestling until I started hanging out with Cody Rhodes. Yeah. And he started, I started talking to him about stuff, and he was like, wait, you watched... The match where Kerry Von Erich beat Ric Flair, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" I was like, "Wait, you didn't?" And he was like, "No, I did." And I'm a fucking wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Well, yeah," because the Von Erichs. We used to get Texas wrestling in Tampa, and and I, I loved the Von Erichs. I, Kevin Von Erich wrestled barefoot, so I identified with him. No, he really came in with a swastika. He came in with a swastika. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's fucking yeah. And now that'll and, wake you up, right? Yeah, he came in swastika. Hey, get this guy out! Like he was, yeah. There he is. These are pictures he put wishes. Yeah, he's like, I'm doing a character, guys. <laughs> Jesus. They had the claw. The claw. The dude. All the Von Erichs. Like half of them died from suicide. One. Are they from, enormous? Because they oh, were, they're big motherfuckers. Big huge fucking. Guys. Carrie Von Erich was. Carrie Von Erich was probably the. Go to type in Carrie Von Erich. Carrie Von Erich was a god. Lost his foot in a motorcycle accident. Uh. You want to hear something weird? Yeah. Think about this. This is totally could have happened that's to you. That's a big old fuck, man. Yeah. Dude, that's not even at him at his biggest. He gets bigger. There's like pictures of him. He's just a fucking beast. Yeah, he looks like it. Jesus. I mean, he was a monster. He committed suicide. I think. He did? Yeah, yeah, he committed suicide. Well, he lost his foot in a motorcycle accident. He goes in. Gets his foot repaired, right? He's laying in bed in the hospital. He smells McDonald's. 
And he gets up to go get McDonald's and steps on his bad foot and destroys all the surgery they did to it. And they have to cut off his fucking foot all because he smelled McDonald's. This is in the documentary? Yeah, I'm not sure if that's real or not. That knew he suffered dislocated hip. Doctor, we're unable to. Type in. Wait, wait. Uh, you're, you're not sure if that's true or I'm not? I'm almost that's sure it's true. It. Sometimes I hear things and I don't know if I'm. I'm not certain. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure okay, he smelled well, McDonald's. Here we go. He attempted to walk on it prematurely because he smelled McDonald's. It says that? He, I, no, but that's what I know that happened. He smelled McDonald's and he tried to walk down the hall to get some McDonald's and he stepped on his foot and it fucked it up and they had to amputate it. And then he wrestled with one foot. He wrestled with one foot in the WWF at the time. And uh, and there's a there's one thing. Uh, I don't know, if, Cody, if I'm supposed to talk about this or not. Ugh. Anyway. If you're a wrestling fan and I'm breaking the rules, yeah, KFAB or whatever, someone yanked his fucking foot off one time. They're wrestling. Oh. And he grabs the boot because no one knew that Kerry didn't have a foot. Oh, right. They said it's kept a secret. Yeah, it's kept a secret. So one guy grabbed his boot and ripped his boot off. And he's like, ripped his fucking foot off. Can you imagine pulling a boot and being like, I ripped your fucking foot off, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you imagine the panic? Oh my god, dude! I've been lifting a lot. I didn't think I could do this. I'm on steroids. I gotta tell everybody. I just ripped a man's foot off. Where's the blood? How come there's no blood? I ripped it clean. I ripped it clean. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's him right there, probably right. Yeah. He wore these like razzle dazzle boots when he didn't have a foot. He was the best man, and I followed Kevin Von Erich lives in like Kana Ka Kauai now okay. or Lanai, in Hawaii with his two sons. His two sons are wrestlers, and so I'm like, oh, they oh. are, yeah, Ross and Marshall. And I followed them last night on Twitter. I cannot They're believe fucking studs. Jesus, yeah, Christ, right. No man. shit. These guys are fucking. fucking they jacked. have genetics that are through the fucking. It's roof. a little more than genetics, pal. Dude. Yeah. Fucking. It's got to be a little bit, right? Yeah. It's got to be. A, I mean, the whole family had to be a, at some point. Come on. Except for Michael, I think. Michael is the tall one. He was like 6'7". Yeah. I mean, they're fucking But they're big jacked. fucks. Yeah. I wonder how tall the... I mean, you're working out a lot. You're going to look like that pretty soon. My arms kind of do look like that a little bit right now. Yeah, like, I'm do. concerned. I took a picture of myself naked You're this concerned? Morning. I'm concerned that people are going to be like, it'll be hard to watch my act. Oh, yeah. Because it's like, funny. When we did Bad Friends... Has Bad Friends already aired? At this... Um, yeah, yeah. And when we did Bad Friends... I put on that shirt as a joke, and you can tell that everyone was like, wow, man, you're really muscular. Took a picture of myself naked this morning. How'd it, how'd it look? Not bad. Not bad. A little muscular. In the dark is a shadow. I am running like crazy, and the number one thing I care about when I run is socks. Socks that cramp up in the front of the toe. I don't know if you've ever had, to you, had that happen to you. It make, they make you crazy. That's why I love Features. If you want to perform at your best, you need to feel the best from head to toe. And Features is obsessed with making the perfect sock. Ones that you don't have to think about because they're custom-like fit means they don't slip, they don't bunch, and they certainly don't give you blisters. That is number one. If you plan on running 12 miles, man, the last thing you want to feel is a little nudge on the back of your heel. That's not going to happen with Features. They've got targeted compression acting like a hug around the arch of your foot to keep the sock in place and prevent it from bunching, slipping, or sliding into your shoe. The anatomical design comforts the left and the right shaped foot, which is so... That's where I live today. That's the future we're living in right now. Left foot and right foot sock, bro, I don't need anything better than that. And they got a lifetime guarantee. Features are so durable and long-lasting that you're, if you're unsatisfied at any point, they're going to give you a replacement pair for... Free, no questions asked. Guaranteed to be the best sock you've ever worn. Features is challenging you to try a pair of their socks. And if they're not the best socks you've ever worn, they'll take them back. They're so confident that you're going to love their socks that they've also given our listeners of Two Bears, One Cave $10 off your first pair of features when you go to features.com slash cave. That's F-E-E-T-U-R-E-S dot com slash cave for $10 off your first pair of features. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Squarespace. My website, burburbert.com, was designed by my wife in a moment of giving up, desperation. She said, I've got to be able to do better than these prices that are coming in. And we teamed up with Squarespace. They were a sponsor of the broadcast at the time. And my wife 
designed our website by herself with Squarespace. She decided, I have a cool idea. She turned that cool idea into the website. If you have a web website, you can showcase your work with it, blog, publish content, sell your products, services of any kind, and they have gorgeous templates created by world-class designers, a powerful e-commerce functionality that allows you to sell anything online, and you get to customize the look, feel, setting, and the products in just a few clicks. If you want to buy a new domain, choose from over 200 extensions, built-in search engine optimization, free and secure hosting, and the best, and this is why Leanne loved it, 24-7 award-winning customer service. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial when you're ready to launch. And use the code BEARS to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com. Enter the code BEARS. Anyway, um, speaking of Hitler, can I tell you something? Yeah. I have been tripped up on the fact that... Bad guy or good guy? Bad guy. Okay. Bad guy. Okay. Bad guy, but I wonder right now. You know how like when people... You know how like when people get like canceled and mm -hmm. then they come back and they're like I, I didn't realize my actions what i was doing i didn't realize. i wonder if hitler was like came back to life and he'd be like oh shit they look badly on what i did yeah like because everyone was agreeing like i mean yeah yeah everyone was co-signing on oh, it. Like, like now i'm the bad guy oh, now i'm the bad guy yeah that... like I, I would love to hear his his apology and i am so sorry or if he just like showed up with a bunch of papers like let me first of all let me just say <laughs> that when i gave the speech Everybody was applaud. It says yeah, applause. They applause, were applause. all applauding. Everybody. It's applauded. almost like when Sarah had to apologize for the Britney or for the Britney or the Paris Hilton joke, uh -huh. and she was like, she was like, I felt bad at the time. But you know what? The you know part of Sarah had to be had to be like, hey guys, I wasn't the only one making fun of her. I don't remember this. At what is this? Sarah apologized. Silverman. Silverman apologized to Britney Spears. But recently, not, not Britney Spears, Paris Hilton. Yeah, recently, like for, last week for a joke. Yeah, she made a joke about. Here, by the way, I th still think Paris Hilton's fucking hot as shit. Is it Paris Hilton? I think Paris Hilton's hot as shit. Yeah, of fucking course. so hot. Of course she is. So hot. Okay, apologize for mocking her in two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Just to be fair, like just to be fair in across the board, they've tried. They're trying to cancel David Letterman because, um, he was pretty uh, aggressive, I guess, to her. I don't remember. I didn't see that interview. I was like, can I tell you something? What I what I disagree with though? What's that? D doing like apologizing for old stuff because like it's true that if you go, well, I told this joke in two thousand five, it killed. Today in twenty twenty one, it's not okay. It's like yeah, but we're not we're not in two thousand five. Like I don't have to apologize for saying fucked up things fifteen years because back then it wasn't as fucked up. You know, it's it's yeah. How you're supposed to like uh. I'm should apologize because the culture was different and the environment was different. Well, it's, and it's 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 super uh, Monday morning quarterback for everyone to go. That shit's out of bounds today. Where, where you go? Well, what about back then? How come Wait, you didn't so what was call the her out then? Above that, she said. Uh, she said something it? like she's going to jail. It doesn't say uh, uh, the joke. I'll tell said. you the joke. The, I mean, I, I wonder if I, uh, Sarah's going to be upset that I quote her joke well, we're I, talking about it yeah so it makes sense her joke was um something to the effect of they she's going to jail tomorrow mm -hmm. she was going to jail the next day mm -hmm. which i would have been like if i was going to jail the next day i would have been like oh, i don't want to hear i'm not maybe i'm not going to go to a roast and hear i have a feeling i'll be brought up i'm yeah. going to jail tomorrow but um they painted the bars to look like dick so she'd feel more at home hey wait, stop 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 I know it's really difficult, you know, to apologize, and for someone to do that really means a lot. Apologies are never late, so it's okay. Okay. Well, and apparently, Wait, she said that in, in Sarah's defense, she felt she felt not cool with that joke the night she told it. You know that she got it. They fucking she's doing a roast for MTV. They slide her a bunch of jokes. Yeah. She probably wrote a, a bunch of that were the good ones. Yeah. And then a bunch of writers slid her some, and she's yeah. like, "I got to fill time. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking tell these jokes." She read it. It killed. She looked at Paris. Paris was not cool with it. And I bet, in all honesty, that's why I don't do roasts. I don't like hurting people's feelings. I bet Sarah's like, "That's not who I am. I feel bad." Yeah. She wrote Paris a letter that day. She did. And gave it gave it to Paris's assistant and said, "Hey, can you give this to her because like I felt bad about that joke." Paris uh, was on her way to jail, so she didn't get any letters, right? Then had a rough time in jail, and then kind of disappeared, right? And then today, then, what was she going to jail for? DUI. And and the joke was something about she's going to jail tomorrow. 
Um, they painted the bars to look like dicks, so she'd be more at home. Okay. Oh, she doesn't chip her teeth or something. Whatever. I don't okay. know. And so, but it's it's funny. It's not funny. Look, I just think it's, it's crazy just, that why would I remember that back then? People were angry with Paris Hilton because she. I'm, I'm just saying what it was was that she didn't have any talent, is what everyone assumed, but she was famous. And that was the beginning of that happening, of like the Snookies and the the situations and the Pauly D's and the all of a sudden we're getting inundated with this fame. Everyone, you know, like the Kardashians. And now we kind of know that those are our, that's our royalty. Now we realize, oh, if you do get fame, like Snooky is kind of like royalty to us now. Is that people look at her and go, I mean, even I go, fucking snooky has been around for a while, you know? Mm-hmm. You, I, I, you, I made fun of her when she was coming out, but... I, maybe that, you know, whatever. But it's it's funny that no one has any, like, no one has any, like, awareness of how they behaved in 2007 regarding Paris Hilton. Right, right, Like, right. They, they think they all went to dinner parties with their friends, and they're like, I really like her, and I think that she's going to have a great career. Like, they, like they, no one fucking talked like that. No, of course not. And they didn't do that about anyone. The situation or all that shit. They came out, and everyone mocked them, and the comedian simply did what was happening at that time, mm-hmm. which is fucking crazy to me. Yeah, I, I, I think that like Sarah's doing something that it's very mature and like it's very mature and grown up and everything. But I just don't think you need to, you know. I mean, she, I get it. She feels bad. If she feels bad. She, she should. Face, if you feel yeah, genuinely you feel, feel bad, but do I'm it. saying yeah. I'm, I'm making more of a, a, a general statement that I don't think as a comedian you are obligated in any way to be like, let me defend this uh, 20 oh, yeah. year old I've, I have, bit that I did. I looked at, I look at my first special and I go, I'm not going, uh, what, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I was doing at the time. Right. <laughs> Fucking comfortably dumb is not speak. It didn't age well. Let's just say, let's just say that, uh, that someone off asked to buy it. And I was like, I think I'm going to keep that. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the fucking, the track list from Comfortably Dumb is like, let's talk about Mexicans. Let's talk about blacks. Let's talk about gays. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, Bert, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> it's so funny thinking about watching that. I remember watching I'm not that. selling it as an NFT. Fuck that. I think I'll just keep my career. Do By the remember, way, do you remember watching that at your apartment? Yeah. I remember watching that, coming over and watching it. Uh, I remember. I mean, like I was, that was all. Did that. it change things the next day? No, or not, the- not at all. Nothing. No one saw it. No one saw it. No one's. I mean, it's online. Was that like so disappointing? That yeah, not like no one saw, but like meaning like it's out, and you're like, so what happens now? I remember running into Bill Burr and asking him like he was like, yeah, I had a special, and I was like, yeah, and he was like, nothing. I said, yeah, and he goes, what the fuck? What what do we do these and no one sees them? And it was because Comedy Central's business paradigm at the time was <laughs> was. Was that joke on there? That was a good special. Fuck off. I, I don't give a shit. I, I, I stand by everything in that special. That was a good special. You just really did a 180 right then, yeah. didn't you? Well, I just remembered I had the carrot cucumber joke's a great fucking joke. Yeah. Carrot cucumber's a great joke. Fighting a black guy's a great joke. Yeah. The, the fucking Latino jokes in there are great. Hey, man. Everything's I, I, fucking good. It's not bad. T- Disneyland on acid? That's a good you, fucking special. You literally went from that thing is a problem. And I am not so comfortable with it. And you're like, you know what? Fuck it. Well, you know what it is? You know what it is? I dealt with a lot of, I dealt with a lot of uh, backlash because I had one joke about that I wrote on my way there. I wrote on my way there. and I On your way to tape? On my way to tape. There's like three jokes in there that I wrote during the special. Yeah. I was, I I really enjoyed that special. No one watched it. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing is, I, I don't, it's not as much as like, I don't give a fuck. You can watch the special. You can find it online. I'm certain those jokes are online. Pe- certain people ripped it and put them online. And I'm, I have people have seen them recently. I haven't been canceled. My profile's increased. I haven't been canceled. So I'm, I'm fine with that special. But I just don't that material. I think I graduated from well, that yeah, material. Of course you did. Like where I look at the stuff I write now and I go, it's a, it's, it's not more woke. I'm, I'm definitely not more woke. I'm just, but it's just I'm a better comedian now. That's exactly what And that's is. why I really didn't want to sell it. Because so I was like, I don't really care for people to see that because I was young and I was like trying to break walls down. And it's just, is, it's you know, it's embarrassing when you are a good comic and you're like, I can just fucking tell a story now. Yeah. 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 Um, what is what is your Mima thing? What is mean, it? Mean, dude, I didn't know shit about Kamala Harris. Okay. I didn't know anything about her. Like, I, I really honestly, 
it's interesting how little what little information comes into my brain f- from the news cycle yeah like all i knew is that tech technically i thought everyone hated kamala harris technically like like his like all the all the democrats hated her when she was running for president like all the democrats were like she went back on her oh, crime bills okay, okay. she's a liar and then and then and i, I and then I thought Biden hated her, and then when they teamed up, I was like, "Okay, fine, whatever." Well, she 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 got him good at one of those early debates. Like she slammed him. Yeah, hard. she lit him up, and then yeah. all of a sudden they got there. I was like, "This is a little fucking flip floppy," but um, I didn't realize how fucking brilliant her family is. Last night, upset her sister meme her, her niece meme meme Mina Mina Mina. Is it I Mina? Know. I don't know. By the way, Mina Harris is gorgeous, just okay. FYI, and fucking brilliant. That's her sister? Her, her, niece. her niece, her niece, okay. gorgeous. By the way, they're both gorgeous. By the way, their whole fucking family is gorgeous. Mina's mom is a fucking smoke show, too. What, who's, and Mina, Mina is, what is, is she? She is, uh, for lack of better words, and this is why I keep bringing up Roger Clinton, she's Roger Clinton. Like, remember Robert or yeah. Clinton? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roger Clinton is a is a real treat. I miss that guy. I got to be honest yeah. with you. I would Roger Clinton. Yeah. Is Bert. I you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. I mean this guy was a real piece of work. You know what is you know what you know what you know what they you know, a secret service called him? No. Operation Headache. Really? <laughs> because he was a pain in the ass to shows you what a great dude by the way I, i'm nervous saying bill clinton was a great dude because i'm certain shit because gonna come out about that guy but it shows you what a great dude bill clinton has a sketchy past uh, yeah i think a lot of it's out <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's stuff that's coming out yeah but it, it got cuomo under the rug <laughs> yeah it's uh but bill clinton was like good big brother to that guy he bought him fucking houses Pardon DUIs. I mean, I meant allegedly. I don't know. Yeah. He like, B- Roger Clinton would show up and be like, yo, I got these buddies. I was pardoned with last night. <laughs> yeah. Can you pardon them real quick? And Bill's like, all <laughs> right. right. And just write them off. <laughs> and like, like it would, he was such a fucking headache. At one point. You would so be that guy. At one point. This is, by the way, this is from what little I realized, what, what researched. Because I was like obsessed with Roger. I, 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 I saw Mina Harris trending. And so I was what does like, she, what does she do? She just is. Uh, she's just uh, apparently I got a buddy that, that works at the White House and he texted me and he's like uh, she's a fucking nightmare this lady is yeah because she's she doesn't really I, lawyer children's book author producer founder of the phenomenal woman action she's campaign she's trying to grow her brand through her her aunt sure which is fine I would do the same fucking thing yeah I would do the same thing but it's sometimes in growing your brand you scroll scroll you gotta like tweet off shit and she like tweeted something about the fucking boulder shooter she's like fun another white guy she's killing everyone and then everyone's like here's Muslim. oh there you go scroll down or wh- whatever he was she wrote yeah. violent white men are the greatest terrorist threat to our country <laughs> by the way her her aunt is the vice president yeah. <laughs> it makes you seem like oh, she deleted the tweet oh yeah she had yeah. to if <laughs> he was a fucking wife he's yeah. a syrian born son <laughs> but she her aunt her aunt is the vice president it means it's, it's Sunday supper. The conversation isn't so fucking even killed. It's like, God, fuck these white people. You know, Biden must be like, hey, push open Kamala's door. Your fucking niece is at it again. <laughs> it's just, uh, by the way, just for the record, I gotta say this. I thought he was white too. Before I saw that he was, I didn't you? The the suspect? Yeah, before you knew what he was, I was like, I figured he was a white guy. I thought he was a white guy. Yeah, everyone did. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't tweet it. Who the fuck tweets it? There's a lot of things I think. I just don't see them. And I say a lot of fucked up shit. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. So I, what were we talking about? Roger Clinton? Yeah. Anyway, Mina Harris is, by the way, smoking hot. She's super hot. Smoking hot. Yeah. 
smoking hot. And by the way, I don't, you know, I don't mind fucking people who fucking shoot from the hip and just fucking inflammatory bullshit. I don't mind that. I, don't I mind know that. you don't mind that. I love it. I yeah. love it. More of that shit. More Roger Clintons. Yeah. More Roger Clintons, in my opinion. Someone's like, hey, Roger, how do you have such a nice house? He goes, oh, well, me and my brother split it 50-50. Yeah. And they're like, wait, you paid for this? He's like, yeah. And they're like, you pay taxes on that money? He's like, ah, my brother bought it for me. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I thought we were going to fuck, right? We're not fucking. I got two chicks fighting in the backyard. You want to see it? You want to see it? They're going to sue me. They're going to sue me. He is a fucking real. Like, Mina's too smart. If we could get a dumb niece, mm-hmm. like a real dumb niece to Roger Clinton it up. Anyway, a little sidebar. Okay. Um, a little sidebar. Uh, Mina Harris is, all Kamala Harris's family, mm-hmm. they're all geniuses. Really? Every person in that family would run circles around the average person. Like, yeah. sur- the, they're all, look at this. Donald Harris, he's like a geneticist. Okay. That's her dad. That's her dad. He was, what does he do? He's an economist and a professor at Stanford. Yeah, fucking, yeah. her mom's a geneticist, I think. Oh no, her mom d- d- did research breast cancer. Really? Yeah, yeah, I, d- I researched a there. little bit of this. Let's see, you're right, American biomedical scientist born in British India. Fucking. Isolating, characterizing progesterone receptor gene. That's yeah. all, that's, that's brains, you can't shake that out of their DNA. That's yeah. brains, those two parents are your parents, you're gonna be a genius, you're fucking, everyone in your family is gonna be a genius. So what we need is we need a dumb Harris. A Del- Harris, like a Robin Harris that we can hang out with. Remember Robin Harris? Yeah. Comic? He was Oh, he was awesome. brilliant. Bebe's Bebe's kids. Kids, yeah. Bebe's kids. Oh, Wouldn't that be great if we found out Robin Harris was related to Kamala oh, Harris? Oh, man. He was the fucking best. Robin Harris is the best, man. He was the best. Look at, look, look at this motherfucker right here. He would, he would just roast the oh. fuck out of people. Front row. You wanted no part of that. He would destroy you, man. So good. His special that ended up leading to Bebe's kids yeah. is so fucking funny. Just him eviscerating people just for showing up to his special. <laughs> and he had that, he was like one of the, like it would sound, you know, like an old school thing now because it is, but he was the original. And when someone was like, Hey, um, do you have any extra change you can spare? He was like, I, I you can get a job I can spare. <laughs> like he, he would just like <laughs> tell people to get fucking jobs for asking him for money. He was great though, man. His yeah. cadence was hilarious. Yeah. A lot of people said that he, uh, you know, his, his cadence is what like Bernie Mac took, you know? Really? I I mean, people have said that for sure. Bernie Mac, uh, hymns downstairs. Yeah, hymns downstairs. Hymns downstairs. Because I believe Robin would be Chicago too, right? No, I thought he was, I thought he was Compton. Chicago or St. Louis, I'm guessing. No, I think he's LA. Mm -mm. I'm almost certain he's LA. We're about to find out. Chicago, Illinois. Fuck. Yeah. God Born in Chicago, it. died in Chicago. Damn, baby's kid. Yeah. Yep. He was. How old shit. would he be today? Uh, let's see. When was he born? Fifty-three. He died at the age of. Th- Hold on. What? Oh. How was he? He was thirty-six. He died at thirty-six. What? That's so young. I didn't realize he was that young. He had like an older guy's vibe. You know, like. Even in that special, I thought he was 50. Yeah, he was 36, Tom. That's crazy. That is how old I was when I did my first special, probably. Me too. (sighs) Wow. Yeah. And then what's crazy is that he, I mean, that's insane. That's insane. He's got a son, Robert Harris Jr. I wonder if he does stand-up. He started to do stand-up. He did? Yeah. Stand-up's weird. It doesn't really get trans... It doesn't go down. It doesn't. In but I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he does or not. Oh, it kind of looks like his dad. Yeah. Yeah, he does. This podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets you change your online locations so you can control where you want sites to think you're located. That's really important depending on what country you may be traveling to now that we're all kind of opening up or where you are. And it's important because you can choose what location you want to be in. So say you're on Netflix and you're like, I've seen everything. Well, then you can change your VPN and say, all of a sudden, I'm in India or I'm in China. Or for my daughter, we use Japan because she loves anime. And now all of a sudden, Isla's watching anime. Anime. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. Uh, The UK, Japan, 
UK, uh, UK Netflix, you watch Doctor Who. That's not a bad one. This works with any streaming service like Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube. You can stream HD no problem, no buffering, no lag. It's compatible with all your devices, phones, laptop, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. Not only does it let you change your location, it also encrypts your data unless you surf the web safely and anonymously. Go to expressvpn.com slash cave to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash cave. MeUndies believes that comfort is about more than just what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. You know when you're at home and you go, I'm going to change into something comfortable. Well, that's MeUndies. It's like they pull the clouds from the sky, spin it into undies, socks, bralettes, loungewear, and you can choose from an endless style in many sizes. Extra small to Tom's size for extra large. God, I wish he was still fat. They're sustainably soft, microbial, and new ultralight breathable fabrics are so comfy and well breathable, you can move free or not. It's up to you. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. Any first-time purchaser, you get 15% off and free shipping. MeUndies also has their problem-free philosophy. So if you're not satisfied with any of the product, for any reason, they're going to refund it or exchange it. No caveats, no questions asked. To get 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash bears. That's MeUndies.com slash bears. Trust me, you're going to love these undies. Yeah, that's a, that's that's tough to live up to for sure. It's tough because it's you you. I think I wonder if you know it's it's a voice. So once you get you establish that voice as a comic, then people see your child, and if your child has a similar voice, yeah, then you're like, like well, you just. I always doing. thought it was. I thought the craziest thing I'd ever heard when I first heard it was that Chris Rock had a brother doing stand up. I heard that and I was like, how how why would you even? But then I found out like I learned that Tony's really good comic. Tony's really good, and by the way, I. If I'm not mistaken, but that's they bold, both say man. Jordan, their youngest brother, yeah. is funnier than all of them. Really? Yeah. Uh, they uh, all, and by the way, right now, Tony's going, I've never said that once. Yeah, yeah, no. I remember. Uh, I've heard Chris say it about Tony. I think Tony's, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, think Chris I, just, Rock's, I just mean like, I didn't even know who Tony was. And I heard Chris Rock's brother does stand up. And I go, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Their cousin does it too. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, I remember starting... Tony, had, I think, had already started, but I was working the door when Tony started coming by. Tony's definitely better looking than Chris. Tony's a good looking man. Tony murdered at the store one time, mm -hmm. and I had to follow him, and I was like, what fucking bit? It was, a, it was an old school cadence bit where it was like, dot, 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 fong, gong, dot, 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 fong, gong. Uh -huh. And it, it was murdering, and I, was, I had to go next. I go, what the fuck is that? I couldn't understand. I couldn't, I'm in the back because so I couldn't hear it. I go, what the fuck is that bit? And he was almost like, huh? Oh, I don't, yes, it's like a little bit. And I was like, yeah. Fuck. You know who did that at the, um, Tony Woods did that when we would, uh, I did Shoreline Amphitheater with him and oh, Chappelle. Oh, yeah. And Tony Woods <laughs> goes up there and we're doing 20 minute sets before Dave. Tony does a 20 minute set. There's 22,000 people at the show. And after his 20 minute set, he gets a standing ovation. And we were all like, okay. Like, no, dude. And he walks off. I go, what the fuck, man? He goes, that's like a college set, man. Like, he he's is like, so. He was like, this is just some bullshit I did. He, you know, he used to have this bit that he did back when I started about uh, having his, he had a monkey, he had a pet monkey. Mm -hmm. And he used to dress him up. Like, he'd shave him and dress him up like himself. And we'd walk around. And he had stories about him and his monkey going on adventures. <laughs> And I talked to him the other day, and I was like, I used to love that bit, like about you and the monkey picking up bitches. And he was like, you know I really had a monkey, right? I was like, no. He was like, yeah. Remember I was dating that girl from Yemen or something? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, she had a monkey, and we smuggled it into the country. And I was like, wait, you really had a fucking monkey? He goes, oh, yeah. And my girlfriend got pissed that I was telling that joke. She was like, if they find out we have a monkey, we're in a lot of trouble. We brought it in from a different fucking country. I go, you really had a fucking monkey? And he was like, yeah. And I would dress it up to look like me. Only Tony would do that. Only Tony. He's the fucking greatest, man. Yeah. He called me up one time. He goes, he goes, hey. Hey shorty, hey shorty, I'm in uh, I'm in Australia, watching some motherfucker tell our Tracy Morgan story. I said, really? He goes, yeah, I'm gonna go up and talk to the motherfucker. 
Some guy was telling the bit. Oh, I heard about this. And Tony just walked up. He's like, that's a great story, man. What bar was you at? And the guy was like, uh. Tony just busted him. Tony's the fucking greatest. Wasn't man. that what? Didn't that trend somewhere? Like, didn't that get online? Yeah, something. I that don't somebody know. was doing that. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Remind me to tell you about something on the DL. Okay. Yeah, boy, boy, oh boy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. Oh, I got one for you too. What? I gotta tell you. I'll write it down. Are you left-handed? Yep. And I'm writing with my left hand again. So go suck my left ball. <laughs> nice. I got one of those for you. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, I almost want to end the podcast now. Um, so I was always hung up on Hitler that he um he didn't grow up in Germany, right? But then he took over Germany. You you're you're fixed on this? Well, yeah, because a lot of a lot of these so I've been obsessed with revolutions. Ever since that storm the Capitol thing, I've been obsessed with revolutions. Mm -hmm. I've been obsessed with revolutions. Were you at the Capitol? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was getting vaccinated there. And so so I, uh, I go, I, I was obsessed with the fact that Lenin, I think Lenin wasn't Russian, right? He was Georgian. Okay. Um, Hitler grew up in Austria. in Austria. Right. But then I found out that it's kind of like Nate Bargatze. He's going to love this. <laughs> Let me get this clean so someone can cut it. Hitler and Nate Bargatze have a lot in common, and I'll explain why. On the next episode of Two Bears, One Cave. <laughs> <laughs> you know how Nate, you know how Nate represents Va Vanderbilt on yeah. everything and yeah. he didn't go to school there? I got you. That's Hitler. That's Hitler. So that that type of personality of someone who didn't it's, go to school somewhere that loves wearing their hats is very similar to Hitler's personality of not growing up in Germany but wishing he had gone to Germany. Yeah, yeah. And like he went to high school but he never went to college in right, Germany. Right, right, right. And so Nate and Hitler have a lot in common. Yeah. Hitler and Dave Williamson have a lot in common. Let's go he, back to Nate. Okay. <laughs> Hitler because he's probably got a big tour coming up, and maybe he could he could brand it like. Ooh, that's Nate not a Bargatze. bad idea. I'm a lot like Hitler tour. No, no, it's Nate Bargatze, and then call it my struggle, Mein Kampf, <laughs> and then just be like, and have his Vanderbilt hat off to the side, like, don't you wish yeah. you had gone and a little school? mustache? Right now, Nate's gonna be like, I don't find any of this funny. I believe it. I don't find. <laughs> Any of this funny. I, I do a Christian podcast where we talk about uh, waffles and biscuits and gravy. I bet. I, I think. I think you're probably pissing them off more right now. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it is the same. It is is that Hitler did just identified with being German? Yeah. It's like and he, dude, and I, you didn't go to Vanderbilt. That's what you're saying. Yeah, he didn't go to Vanderbilt, yeah. and so and he but he. Hitler would bring up Germany all the time the way Nate brings up Vanderbilt games. Yes. And you're like, but you went, didn't go to school there, right? And he was right. like, I know, but I've been a big fan. And you're like, yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. okay, we know where this leads. Okay. <laughs> I was I, I was stuck on that. It's, by the way, it's a perfect analogy. Of like it's that, a perfect it's, analogy. My, my wife's family, who are all Alabama fans, but they don't even live in Alabama, never been to Alabama. That's a big Southern thing, though. A lot of Southern folks are Fucking like, Hitler. huge Bama fan. That's Hitler. Hitler yeah. was a big Germany fan. Yeah. That's crazy. He was a big Germany fan. He was yeah. a fan of, he faked an accent so that he sounded more German. Do you want to run this by Nate real quick? Yeah, I would love Just, to. Yeah. Because I think Nate would really appreciate it. Like once you, once you, he hears. Should we FaceTime him the way yeah. normal people call each other? Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it, man. He's definitely on the golf course. Nate Bargatze, FaceTime. Okay. Okay. Let's see what he says. Congrats on his new special, of course, too. We should new special, average American hero, average American, average American. Um, I think Who doesn't the, answer a FaceTime? Is it most average American. As average American, I'm pretty sure. I, I thought it was it. the most average American, the greatest, greatest average, average American. American. Oh, Hi. what are you doing? A bunch of interviews. Okay, well, perfect. We're doing two bears, one cave. You're here with Tom Segura. Hey, Nate. Hey, what's up, dude? How First you doing? of all, congrats on the Netflix special. I'm putting you towards camera so people can see your reaction when I run this idea by you. Okay? Oh, yeah, and I'd like to see his face. Oh, man. Go ahead. Okay, I was pointing out how you and Hitler are similar because... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Nate, Nate. This isn't the first time hearing this. Go ahead. Nate, Nate, this is... <laughs> Nate, just so you know, this is all Bert, okay? Go ahead, Bert. I go, you know, Hitler was Austrian, but he was a big fan of Germany. 
that's like you and Vanderbilt. Like you didn't go to Vanderbilt, but you're a big fan of Vanderbilt and you talk about Vanderbilt. <laughs> Hey, hey, Nate, he's really, he really likes this theory that you and Hitler are very similar in this <laughs> because, regard. Because, yeah. like Hitler was always talking about Germany and wearing Germany hats yeah. on stage. And people yeah. would go, oh, you Germany? He's like, no, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> I like what they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's always talking about their players and, and all that. And so. maybe you you can start throwing this out in these interviews you're doing. So <laughs> yeah. the name of your next tour, we were, Tom was thinking you could yeah. call it My Struggle. <laughs> <laughs> talk about it just it just go full in and just say okay i went to vanderbilt <laughs> yeah. as a matter of fact i'm running for president of vanderbilt <laughs> <laughs> you like it nate <laughs> am i running for president of vanderbilt yeah, yeah. or fuhrer <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i got some good ideas that i think vanderbilt should be doing <laughs> <laughs> plan on <laughs> Yeah, letting those be known soon. We're leaking them out slowly and slowly. Yeah, like for instance, there's some of the student body they should throw out, probably right, <laughs> causing a lot of problems. The student body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, congrats on the special, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome for this treat of a phone call. Up. All right. Yeah. I'll talk to you. <laughs> All right. I love All you. Right. I'll talk to you later. Bye, bud. Bye. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that went well. Someone call Kamala Harris. Do you think Kamala Harris would like our show? No. For real? No. Do you think Joe Biden would? Joe Biden yeah, would. Yeah, I think he, he definitely I think would. He'd be Let's go do politicians we think that would love our show versus politicians that would hate our show. Bernie Sanders. No. No? No. They're not fun, dude. Politicians aren't fun? Dems. <laughs> They're not Damn. fun. Oh, you think Republicans would like our show? For sure. For real? Yes, they have a better sense of humor. You know, I'm a registered Republican. I didn't know. Yeah, I get. I I was fucking. I get emails from Donald Trump all the time, and I'm like, why the fuck? Is this you guy? probably signed up for him, man. I signed up <laughs> when I was 18, and I registered to vote. Uh -huh. I just picked one, and I picked Republican. And then when I found out, I, I said it to Leanne. I go, I'm a registered Republican, and she goes, Yeah, I know. I was like, Wait, how did you know? And she goes, Because you went to sign up. You went to go vote for the Democratic. When we first got married, yeah. I went to go vote for something, and they wouldn't let me vote because I wasn't registered for that. And then she said, "Don't change it because you already know who you're going to vote for on our side. Stay on that side, and then you can help pick the person on that side." And I was like, uh, "Well, I don't know. Something I don't know what the fucking anyway. riddle that was." But uh, yeah, no, I'm saying that like if you had a, if you said like you can perform to a room full of Republicans or Democrats, I would choose the Republicans every time. Because they are, they have a way better sense of humor. Yeah, I, I did. Do. I did a fucking like a polit. Like somebody asked me to be on a show. My my my, it was my a fundraiser. My inside spy on the in the White House is a, a Republican. Yeah, he's not in the not White House right now. But my insider on Washington yeah. D.C. Oh God, yeah, Republican. they Republicans will laugh. They're they have a they have oh, he a, thinks I'm fucking brilliant. He thinks you're brilliant. Yeah. What the fuck does this guy do? <laughs> I got a couple inside spies. Yeah, yeah, I got a few inside spies. Okay cool you ever do you ever done like a woke crowd yeah yeah that's that's like the dem party now Ugh. so like if you're doing a show i'm saying i'm not talking about like having a conversation or whatever i'm saying like doing a show oh god it's a fucking total nightmare oh yeah it's like the difference between performing in like i guess i, I yeah i bet i wonder why well, it would be interesting to know what the majority of uh, the listeners of our podcast what their politics are i don't really care i don't, I don't give a fuck i didn't really think about i bet it. there's a lot of our fans that or like, what are politics? Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I don't think they're coming here for politics. You don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. You, don't, you think when I was like, me and Harris, they're like, I have no idea who that is. I, I didn't know who that was. Yeah. Oh, for real? No. Yeah. I just, uh, I, yeah, whatever. I haven't been paying attention that much to it. I, I also have been watching way less news. I used to be around, I mean, I still read articles, but I, I, I watch way less news. I was on Twitter a lot yesterday. I don't even know why I'm on Twitter. I, have enough, I don't even tweet. I just read shit. I opened my phone and Twitter and you had tweeted like 16 things in a row. Oh, I do. Cause what I'll do is cause because I don't have anything good to tweet. I tweet like you bullshit. quote tweet. I quote tweet people yeah. like if people, uh, Nutella. I hadn't tried Nutella before. Right. I did a crazy mashup. So you do this though. Yeah. Like I, I laugh hard as fuck when these guys laugh. Yeah. Like I try to get, stay out of the shit. Yeah. Cause I don't want to be in shit. I don't want to, I don't like the negativity. 
Like I, I went to read Eddie Eddie uh, Eddie Huang. I don't know the right way to say. it. I don't know. I'm, I'm Wang. guessing. Is I think it's bad? Wang. No, no. I think it's Hong Wang. Wang. Hong. I don't know. But he's okay. f- friends with Joe, and I like him on Joe's podcast. And he just did fresh off the boat, but he hated it. And he's got a new movie called Boogie that's out now. And I wanted to read the article because <clears throat> I've always liked his, I've always liked his perspective. It's always kind of similar to comics. Okay. Um, someone wanted to Photoshop my Jay Cutler's hair because we remember we were talking about getting hair transplants. Oh yeah, so did they? Uh, yeah, and it doesn't look good. Why? I does, I just don't look good with. Full can you head open hair. that? Can you open that tweak? Because it'll probably be underneath it. Jay Cutler has the yeah. That's very terrifying. Very Are there terrifying. any more? That's super scary. John Mayer's hair. I like. I was going through a hair phase. Mm-hmm. John Mayer's hair. Who? Oh, oh my God! That's really me. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that was me. That's gross. You don't like that? Oh fuck! Why? I'm so skinny now compared to that. You know, I'm probably the exact same weight as I am there, but I'm in so much better shape. From all your workouts? For all my powerlifting. I love when people... Okay, let's not do my hair anymore. Why? Well, they're fucking my head up. Like, my head doesn't look like that. <laughs> like, I no, they're taking. This. I'm looks, enjoying this. You just... Okay, scroll. Oh, these are all fucking hair pictures. I didn't see any of these. Yeah, of course. They did what you asked. Don't you think... That That's not bad, looks good. That looks, that looks really good. I'm, I was... We should retweet that and tell them to fix my teeth too. My teeth look great there. Yeah. Scroll. Ooh. Ooh. That's not so bad, man. I'm a good looking guy. Like on a scale of one to ten. I'm like a solid seven. Do you think do you think Kate Beckinsale thinks I'm attractive? <laughs> That's kinda... never occurred to me. Look at that guy. That hair looks good. That body looks good. That body looks good. That body looks good. That body doesn't look bad. Let me rephrase that. Okay. The fupa I could get rid of. But it's not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Keep going, Adab. Let's see it. Okay. That's a weak Photoshop That's job right pretty there. pretty bad. Who is that? Oh, who it's, is that? They're saying it's your face. I don't know who it is, though, but she's who? making a similar expression. Who is she? She's beautiful. Yeah. You're both beautiful. You're seven. She's up there too. Yeah. We're both sevens. My face looks slimming right there. Yeah. Like it looks, the, I look skinnier right doing there. doing this expression. By the way, I think I was skinnier there, way skinnier than I am now. I think I was like 130, 235. What do you weigh now? It's still 240. Still? Yeah, because I'm gaining so much muscle that as the weight shreds off, I just gain the weight back with muscle. I didn't need, I need to eat today. You haven't eaten yet? I'm fucking... I've had a busy morning, Tommy. I was yeah. doing research for the show. I had a list of things I wanted to talk about. We yeah. barely even got through them. I mean, what's a, what's the a sponsored event you wanted to do? Ooh. So I've kind of kind of run with this two bear sports management thing. I should tell you that I'm looking at more clients. Do you know that we um we we have a, a logo? No. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Yeah. You know, people have hit me up and said this is not your worst idea. No, it's not. It's not. This isn't a bad idea. And so I was talking to Nathan Fletcher. Fletcher, Nathan, Nathan Florence, my bad. Nathan Florence. And uh, he's a pro surfer. I had him on my podcast. And he was saying. Do you have it? Can you pull it up? Okay, great. And he was saying, yeah, like. But uh, don't, show the, don't show the audience. <sighs> that's great. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's what here's what Nathan Flores is saying. He was talking about he was talking about he's into big wave surfing. And big wave surfing gets so much traction uh-huh. online, right? Online when dudes charge big waves like like uh wherever fucking yeah. Jaws or 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 Mavericks, those videos go viral very easily, okay? So I thought what if I said to him I said, "How do you like so how do you pay for those trips he goes sponsors sometimes sometimes i pay for it i go you pay for it and he goes yeah you know i get done a whole season like all winter they stay in hawaii and then the end of winter they start traveling around the world to go do crazy trips and i said what's the i want the my favorite wave is a place called spell it out t-e-a-p 
P U H, I think. It's Tahiti. It's in Tahiti. Okay. And so I said, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Do you see that wave? Yeah. It's fucking massive, right? Yeah. So what happens also is a lot of people don't surf it. A lot of people just sit in boats, like sit on boats on the side because in the channel and just watch people charge these waves. Sure. And so I was like, all right, what's a trip like that cost? And he's like, ah, like 10 grand. I said, for like a bunch of you guys? He's like, yeah. I was like, what if I do a two bear sports management sponsored event, right? Mm Mm-hmm where we take a bunch of you guys and me. I'm just going to kill beers in Tahiti, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to sit in the boat and comment. Like, yeah. watch these dudes charge waves, shoot up. I go, it's a sponsored event. So all the content, we get to fucking put on our show, put on social media. They can shoot their own content and put it on. We're not going to fucking... Right, we're not going to restrict them from doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but I go, at times, you're going to have to go charge the biggest wave. They're like, can you get your biggest wave? You got to come out and be like, Bert Kreischer's going back on tour, so is Tom Segura. You yeah, know, like, boom, boom. like yeah, yes. like, like really get us some fucking eyeballs. And he's yeah. like, I'm fucking in. If you're going to fly us all to Tahiti and put us up. And then he starts going, let's go big. And I was like, really? And you're like, yeah, if you're going to hit Tahiti, why not hit another place, right? Sure. And fucking, it's not... Fiji or something? Yeah, oh, and just fucking... Try, and then find some waves like where me and you can go smaller, right? Smaller. Yeah. But we do like a... Your like a, brain is so... Yeah. And, and, and then all of a sudden you've got like these... The greatest surfers out there, right? Mm-hmm. Professional surfers who just are like, yeah, I want to go charge waves. I want, I want someone to pay for it. And you're like, I'll pay for it. Flying coach. I mean, I'm not flying first class. I'm definitely... I'll bump them up five miles, you know, but I'm not going to fucking throw everyone in fucking first class and the fucking yeah. gets really pricey. Yeah, yeah. But we... And we have... And we shoot a ton of content do a live show around it where we chart like maybe like maybe like we go surfing with them or we do something fun they tow us into some fucking waves but we do something epic yes and we do something crazy and it and i guarantee it it goes viral i dude type in kai lenny kai lenny has been is like the guy i'm obsessed with also you're definitely not spelling that right but there you go there you go go to his instagram go to his instagram look at he he goes, I think he's good friends. They're all good friends. He's skiing right now. Sure. But scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Go to a big wave. He's a big wave surfer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to a big, big wave right there. Keep, big look wave. at all these fucking crazy things these guys are doing. And you want to, you've really been in this wave kick for a while, man. I know so much about surfing without the ability to do it. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing that I am so interested in it. Are you I, going to do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, first of all, first of all, I'm going to fucking... Hawaii. When I get a chance, I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to fucking work out with these dudes and eat clean and I'm going to learn how to surf. I'm going to get spit out of a barrel. Definitely. I've already had Nathan, Nathan's promised me that. Yeah. And then fucking Two Bears Sports Management sponsored surf trip to Tahiti. To Tahiti. Why not? I literally, I thought. Wait, who's the sponsorship coming from? Me and you. Oh. <laughs> we're paying for it. I thought we were going to get a sponsor. You mean we're the sponsor? I haven't thought this totally through. Okay. And maybe I should have run it by my business partner first. Okay. But no, we can, it's, it's we still can, early. We oh, can still, still early. Okay. It's still early. We can definitely get a sponsor. Wait, okay. we can do, oh yeah, we'll just get bare bottoms or someone. Yeah. Like someone who makes bathing suits. Because like this, you know, we could just, or we could just write these guys a check and be like, have a good, have a good trip. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Great. I guess we probably could get sponsorship. For yeah, this. probably. We could yeah. build a deck and just kind of be like, hey, do you guys want to sponsor it? And your name would be everywhere. Yeah, it's a good call. Why don't we do that? <laughs> I'm not the business guy in this fucking no, I, team. Hey, man, it's all good. I'm not the, I don't have like business. Like I, today I was like, you're DJing, right? I freestyle. Yeah. We should have a summer jam. We should definitely have a summer jam. We should have a summer jam. We should have the biggest jam of and, the summer. And like, it's time to get it. Like we need to start writing. And we got to work on it now. Now. We need beats stat like okay. you got to come up with beats okay and then I'll, I'll freestyle lyrics we'll put it together we'll mix it right yep drop it what do we drop it july 4th uh when do I, summer jams type in when summer jams i feel like it's got to come in june sometime what? yeah okay we drop it in june yeah i got nothing but studio time in rehab yeah did you know that 66 percent of men start losing their hair by the age of 35 i was one of those guys and i have a illustrious beautiful head of hair why did i why do i have this hair well back then back in the day you had to go to a doctor you had to go to a pharmacy you had to wait in long awkward lines you don't have to do that anymore you can get in front of this problem right now if you're one of those 66 percent of men all you got to do is go to forhims.com 
Hims was created by a guy who knew that a lot of these conversations for us guys are much easier to have online. So he created Hims. Hims is one stop shopping for basically m- male wellness, skincare, sexual wellness, hair loss, all for men. He wanted us to write a new chapter in our lives, and it starts with hair. All you got to do is go to a medical, prof- go to forhims.com, answer a few quick questions. Medical professional will review. They're going to determine if it's right for you. They can prescribe you all the med- medication to treat your hair loss that's shipped di- directly and discreetly to your door. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results and after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely for free. Go to forhims.com slash bears. That's forhims.com slash bears. Disclaimer, prescription product requires an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash bears. If you spend a lot of times outdoors, you're going to find out pretty quickly that Mother Nature doesn't always play nice. For me, uh, it's dust, man. If I go for an outdoor jog these days, I, I don't know if it's because it hadn't rained, but the dust gets up in the air. And if I breathe in too much dust, my allergies kick in. And if I get too many allergies, I all of a sudden get sick. No one wants to get sick right now. And so that's why I'm more using face shields. And the face shields they have at SA are next level. They're beautiful, breathable, SPF friendly. I mean, let me tell you what they say. Uh, Dozens of eye-catching designs for men and women. They do. I have the black uh, camo, and it looks fucking dope. Throw on some sunglasses, black camo, black hat. Gangster! The f- the shields are breathable. They give you protection from everything outdoors. The sun, the wind, the cold, insects, dust, dirt, moisture, and one size fits all. Machine washable with a lifetime guarantee. That is zero risk for you. And what is so great about this, I think this is still... Oh, this is what's amazing. You stay protected because right now you're going to get this insane deal. If you buy one of their face shields, you get four for free. Fuck. That's $150 value for $24.99. Just go to safishing.com slash cave to get five face shields for the price of one. Plus a lifetime warranty that gives you free returns if you're not satisfied. That's safishing.com slash cave. When do you leave for rehab? April 12th. April 12th. Yeah. Okay, that gives you time to give me my present. No, that's what I'm saying. If your birthday's on the 15th, yeah, but what give I was it to me do, a few days early. Well, I, I, I kind of got to give it to you. I was going to give it to you in Texas. In Texas? When do you get to Texas? May 10th, I think. 9th or 10th. Huh? Say that again? May 9th or 10th. God damn it. Okay. I'll figure out, I'll figure out a way to do it. Um, I'll give it to you on your birthday, kind of. Okay. Okay. And then I guess I'll just I'll just have to present a video that you can watch here with one of your awesome co-hosts. Bert. I have, why do I? You know, you know, I get sensitive about it, right? But yeah, but this, this, but why do I get sensitive about it? I don't know why. You but why? But you wouldn't be sensitive. No. But why do I get sensitive? Well, let's like, talk. What, about how do it. I get rid of? How do I get rid of this? I don't like being sensitive. Okay, let's talk about this. Do you, when was the first time you noticed I get sensitive? It's been years. But I listen, hate it. listen. What? Okay, this is our show, right? And we stick to the like. I think the the rule that you do not you, you are you put every effort in to not miss a week of your show. You don't yes. want right. Yes. We we want to do that. I feel like yes. that for your mom's house for. For two bears. Every know, week's got to be a show. You got to have a show for you. Yes, these. I agree. So, because you are going where you're going, and I'm also moving, there's like a lot that. Oh, so I I understand. There's weeks you also can't do it. Yeah. So like the and the, and since you'll be gone, you can't sub in for me. You don't understand. Yes. So I have to do. You as, have to be on every single one of them. I have to do as many of these as possible, no matter. So you having a commitment for us to do a second one later means I go, I don't even have that much time. So. Okay. Then I will allow Jennifer Anderson to co-host with you. Okay. okay. If Jennifer Anderson wants to co-host, you can co-host. With Would her. you diarrhea all over yourself if you were in rehab and you pulled and they're like, yeah, you can watch a podcast. And then it was the two bears with me and Jen Anston. <laughs> <laughs> or you think you'd be like, give me the drugs right now. Give me the alcohol again. Would it send you spiraling? Yeah. What? <laughs> I have a really hard time with that. I yeah. would, I would, yeah, I would, I might have to shut down rehab, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Just come out. 
come back. Be like, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm pulling the plug on rehab. I have, uh, I have more pressing matters at yeah. hand. And it would just be to be like, to come and be like, where's Shen Anderson? <laughs> It'd be the longest 16 hour flight of my life. Just fucking, I've had bad 16 hour, I've had bad long flights yeah. where you're like, I just want to talk to somebody. Yeah. Why don't we do celebrity guests for you? Okay. You, know, you, should, get, you should get Dak Shepard. To come in here? Yeah. I don't know if you do it. I think you would. Okay. Let's, let's think. All right, guys, here's the deal. Name in, uh, in the comments or no, in, in social media, tag celebrities who you'd love to see sit next to Tom. Okay. For two bears, one cave. I like it. All right. Here's, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw out some, I'll tell you who I would like. Brad Pitt, number one. He would be great. He would be fucking great. And I think we can get him. Okay. Okay. Um, ben Affleck. You know. He'd be great, right? Yeah. Use the hashtag guest bears. Guest bears mm -hmm. of celebs. Celebs. Yeah. That we can get. That you want to permanently replace. Not, no, no, no. <laughs> what I'm looking for is people with very busy schedules <laughs> who cannot commit to a show that shoots weekly. It's okay. 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 So I want celebs. Okay. Who's, uh, who's some big, big names you think we could get? Big um, names. Ryan Reynolds. I you know who Ryan could be Reynolds. permanent? Who? Matthew McConaughey. He lives in Austin. By the way, I'd, I'd be very comfortable. I'd be very comfortable with a with a uh, not I wouldn't permanent's not the word we're going to use, but okay. like a, like a open chair for yeah. him when yeah. he wants to come over yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. can't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew McConaughey would be a good one. Yeah, Rogan's a good one. He's a good one. Yeah, because I know he can't do this all the time, so that's a good one. I feel very comfortable with that. Okay. And I know Matt, I know Matt, you, you'd sabotage Matthew McConaughey. You'd end up sabotaging it because he's got such great hair. You'd be like, yeah, let's all, let's all, let's all just put on hats, right, Matt? And he'd be like, oh, well, I don't know why I got to put on a hat, Tommy. I got all this. Yeah. He is gorgeous. Good looking man. Was, he's a, he's a good looking man. Ripped. He's a seven. Do you seven. think you'll meet him? Yes. Do you, he's Boy, a, hold on. Yeah. You think you'll really meet him? Yeah. Okay, then let's really quickly lay some ground rules about you meeting these celebrities. Okay. Because you, you need to pave a way for me. I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do this, okay? This yeah. is a, what I don't want you to be. I'll be you. You be celebrity, okay? Okay, okay. Okay? You be Matthew McConaughey. Okay. All right, I'll be Tom. Hey, man, it's pretty cool. You got your whole... When we were shooting that thing where I had AIDS, we didn't even have these lights. Yeah, yeah. This is you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then somehow your magic works and you become friends with them without saying anything. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a fucking soft shoe over here and all of a sudden they're like, I'm really interested in Tommy. He seems mysterious. <laughs> Who's the fool dancing next to him with so, his shirt off? So wait, so, so wait, what am I supposed to do? No, this is what I don't want you to do. I'm okay. showing you what I don't want you to don't, do. So don't go, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. I know That's what you're going to do. I can't okay. stop that. Okay. I don't want you to do this, okay? Okay. So bring up, okay. Bring up Bert, and this is what I don't want you oh, to do. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, you usually do this with one of your friends. Yeah, this uh, he's, this guy Bert. He's a big fucking lunatic, big drinker. He's in rehab right now. Anyway, let's not talk about him. That's not what I don't want you to do. Okay. This is what I want you to do. Okay. okay, to okay do, do it, it again. Okay. Do it again. Uh, you seen my Lincoln commercials, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them. That's cool. What do you drive? I, do, I don't know. We get get to Bert. Get to Bert. Uh. Where's the Where's the other guy, the the heavy fellow? Oh, just stop. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey is not going to say that. Where's that guy that lives at two forty? Where's he at? I haven't seen him. Okay, I'll play along with this game. Okay, but I'm going to show you what I want you to say. Okay, okay. okay. He's actually not that big, <laughs> Matthew. It's oh pretty ripped. <laughs> you know what? You would love Bert. I need you to do this. Okay. You would love Bert. He is fucking hilarious. He's my best friend. And you will never get, take his place. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool way to talk to somebody. <laughs> like at a first meeting. <laughs> Oh, I'm about to pass out. <laughs> and I don't fucking love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ever get a replacement. You'll never be better than if they need you to say that. <laughs> You're nothing like him. <laughs> You're so great. <laughs> I know that you really want me to do I this. Know. That's the best I part. Know. That's the best part. Oh. Oh. Uh.
shit. That's okay, when you, when you start meeting you these tight. Austin celebrities, Sandra Bullock, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey, Elon Musk, yeah. Dave Chappelle, all these Austin celebrities with Joe, you're going to meet them with Joe. Joe is going to pump you the fuck up. He's going to be like, oh, you got to meet my buddy Tommy. Power lifts, deadlifts, <laughs> fucking drives fast cars. He uh -huh. can dunk nine foot. <laughs> Fucking greatest guy. Fucking hilarious comedian. Hilarious comedian. Does theaters. Big theaters. Sells tickets. You're going to love him. And then I need you to jump in and go, he's nothing. I'm nothing like Bert. <laughs> I, need you to I need you to be my fucking hype man. Because okay, okay. I'm not going to be there to show them how awesome I am. Okay, I will. I so promise. I need you to like really sell me to these celebrities. I'll be like, listen, my buddy, he's about to get out of rehab. He's got his shit together, finally. <laughs> Don't even do the rehab joke. Don't no. do it. Don't do the rehab joke because okay. they might believe you. And they'll be like, okay. There's people that believe us right now. Of course they do. You've been talking about it the whole show. You I've been probably... wanting to go to rehab my whole fucking life. Do you want to say whether or not you're going? I don't want to leave it out there. Well, Bert, everyone thinks you're going to rehab. For real? Of course. You really think they think I'm going to rehab? A lot of people do. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about it. If I hop off social media for three months, uh -huh. just realize it's 90 days. <clears throat> do you think people really think I'm going to rehab? What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it sounds believable. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you this. I will never start quitting. I'm not going to rehab, you fucking fools. What it, okay. I, by the way, you had to watch an hour and 11 minutes to find that out. There are a million people who watch the first 30 minutes, and they're like, oh, my God. He's yeah, of done. course, but, yeah. Uh, but it's not crazy that they would believe it because yeah, you no, said I'm going to yeah, rehab. I'm never going to rehab. I'll never go to rehab in a okay. million years. Where are you going? I'm not going. I can't tell you. Okay. But you are leaving. I am. Yeah, I can't tell you. I have a secret mission. Is it government? government based i've been wanting to talk to you guys about this i work for assad i've been trying to lure nadav in is assad your thing do you, do you mean Mossad? Mossad, my yeah, bad assad is um a, a dictator in syria who's been oh. murdering people <laughs> for real yeah oh Ma, not that and, guy not and, that guy and he's not a big fan of the guys in the booth if you know what i mean <laughs> Wait, you have a thing called Mossad, and there's a guy named Assad who hates you guys? Mossad came first. Well, Mossad I, is wait, like... Say that the, again, say that again. He said Mossad came first. I mean, that's like... You're talking about Israeli special forces? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Israeli special forces? Mossad. Mossad. Right, with an M. Okay. Assad. Right. Can you pull up Assad? It's a guy. Bashar, Bashar Assad. Yeah, that dude right there. He doesn't look like what I thought he would look like. Yeah, he looks like a real sweet pea to you. <laughs> so what is he? Um, he's a... Syrian? Yeah. Yeah. Is he really? Yes. Yes. And he is, he is not fucking around. Really? <laughs> no. God damn it. Why? He's, he runs a regime? Yeah, I mean, you know, Syria's been in some shit for a while, man. Yeah, Syria is not a place you want a vacation. Look at that look right there. Trying to grow you think, a mustache. You think that guy? Do you think anyone told him it didn't look good on him? Do, do you think you anyone's like, I don't no. know, man, I'd shave it. And he was like, what did you say? Do you think he plays games, this guy? I show me his wife. By the way, I wonder if this guy could get his hands on a... Ooh. Hey. Good looking woman. He is. So wait, what is she? Is she... What is she... What are they? Why do they hate Jews? I mean, that's not the. Are they? Are they? They look Catholic. What's type in uh, Assad's religion? I'm gonna take a wild guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's Islamic. Well, don't, I mean, they're Syrian. I, I, I that means nothing to me. Okay. Um, and then go ahead and spell Musad for Bert. Yeah, type in Musad. That's what I am. Mossad, okay. It's one of it's one of I'm part of Israeli intelligence community along with Amman and Shin Bet. I'm responsible for the intelligence collection, covert operations, counterterrorism. Yeah, all for Israel. You you are yeah, and so I'll be gone. I don't know, 
I'm sure everyone's going to know what the fuck I'm doing. Let them just figure it out. I, I don't want to be the one. To, I don't think I can talk about it. So and I think That's I don't weird. think I can even do this. That's strange. And I don't know. I don't know what the fucking rules are. It's strange that uh, Yossi Cohen didn't give you permission to talk about your mission. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I get about a billion shekels a year. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, they really ha use shekels in Israel? Yes. For real? I've heard the term shekels so much in Hollywood. I didn't know that was... A That's Israeli currency? Yep. Yeah. I had so many managers going, yeah, kick him a few shekels, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Are you serious? I didn't know shekel. I thought shekels was like an old, 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 like, that's what the, the fucking Merchant of Venice used. Oh, right. Oh. No, did it's... the Merchant of Venice use shekels? He was Jewish. He was Jewish. Was it, was it, did they use shekels in, in, uh, in that movie? Which movie? In the uh, play? The book? Whatever. What the fuck? I think I'm getting, I wonder if I have CTE. <laughs> From what? Oh, a lot of my concussions. Shylock, that's what I'm thinking of. Shylock was the merchant of Venice. Okay. He was a Jewish money lender. Okay. There you go. I never would have thought you would reference the merchant of Venice. I, dude, can I tell you, <laughs> can I tell you, you want to talk about things not aging well? Yeah. We did, we read, we read the merchant of Venice in high school. We had one Jewish kid in our high school. And our teacher would be like, uh, and then Shylock, and he'd look at the Jewish kid Jesus. in his class. And he'd be like, oh, he'd be like, he looks a lot like this guy. Our teacher would say that. And we were like, and then, we, then we'd chase him around and take a pound of his flesh. No. I actually knew that kid a long time. Did you? Yeah. I, yeah. Follow him on Instagram. Shylock. Shylock oh, is yeah. the first portrayal of Jewish propaganda. For real? Yeah, I bet was, it was. I bet it was. Can you show so us? So he's kind of like he's kind of like uh, he's kind of like um, Apu. Oh, right from The Simpsons. Yeah. Let's see. That's him right there. He doesn't. He looks like he doesn't look Jewish at all. He looks Italian. Wait, I mean, it was the first portrayal of that's like, Al Pacino of, of a money grubbing. Yeah. yeah, he played Shylock in the movie. Al Pacino. Yeah. That's fucking appropriation. What are they gonna have Al Pacino play Shylock? Is the movie good? Uh, yeah. If you yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes. If you what? If you like Shakespeare. If you like Shakespeare. Shylock says, I get a pound of your flesh. No more, no less. I, uh, it's fucking bizarre the things I do remember and I don't remember. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, some people bring stuff up and then I'll just throw in a little stat. Yeah. Hitler's dad was a beekeeper. And they're like, what? It's like, Hitler's dad was a beekeeper. And they're like, I, I, mean, I have nothing to do with hating Jews. I'm like, oh, I'm just saying you're a beekeeper. Hitler's dad was a beekeeper. Yeah, that's, right? probably, that's probably like, a weird one to hear if you're like, I like bees. You like Hitler's dad? <laughs> Hitler's dad was a beekeeper. And like, I don't know why I'm I always... Know. Hitler's just... dad was a beekeeper and they're like, okay. Okay. I don't... I, 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 by the way, I didn't say anything bad, right? Yeah, no, like, but you're then saying... you're like, oh, you know, he's Austrian and uh, he liked to paint. Wasn't very good at it, but anyway, some of these bees, I bet Hitler's dad would have a thing or two to say. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a beekeeper. My daughters would never let me. I'd love. What's honey. grosser to you? Flicking boogers or in the car or eating them? I think flicking boogers. Were you going to say eating them? You weren't going to no. say eating them. No, I wasn't. Okay, what were you going to say? Flicking them in the car or or your spouse or anyone that lives or sleeps with you flossing their teeth in bed and then leaving the floss on the floor next to the bed, which is grosser. Uh, I'm 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 not really phased by either. I know. Considering I floss and leave flossers everywhere. Uh, I leave flossers. But kids, you need to find them again in a in a jam. You need flossers? Well, I can't believe you guys are being serious about. Flossers should be everywhere around your house. Used ones? Used? Yes. Flossers are recyclable. You can use flossers twice. I have one I have one on my treadmill that I just use all the time. I'm going to fucking throw up right here. On the <laughs> I have floor. a few by my computer where I do podcasts on Zoom. I have a bunch. Watch this. This is how it, when you when I call Leanne oh. and I go, where do I keep? I, first of all, I keep my flossers everywhere. I have them in my backpacks. I have them in my cars. I have them on my, on my things. But I have flossers fucking everywhere. What are you doing? Call what? Leanne. Oh. This, I have flossers around so much. That our friends, when they see flossers that people have dropped, they go, Bert must have been here. I really believe in... Hey, how many flossers do you think I have floating around the house? 1,000. How often do I use flossers? 
five five times a day. Yeah, and and do I reuse flossers? No. Oh no, I definitely you throw do. Them on the ground. You throw them on the ground. Yeah, and then I will you reuse them. Okay, I love you. I, I'm coming. I'll be I'll be there in a little bit. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, flossers. I love flossers, man. I and I keep them in the bed. Uh, flossers are like uh, are like um, reading glasses. You should have them everywhere. I'm gonna fucking puke. All right. And boogers. Now you're telling me. I'm what? talking you like a dry. Oh, like, like a, just like a little like, like thing here, and you. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, flick it. But it's not bad at all. But you also sometimes you sometimes if they're, I have friends that eat them. I need a second. But it's look, it's, it's making my eyes water, man. What if I get canceled for eating boogers? I mean, you could. I mean, do you want me to tell the cool celebrities I meet about that part? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Oh, there's a lot of secrets we got to keep with these celebrities. Okay, okay. We want What we want to do is have mythical propaganda, but, right? Yeah. But you want me to like meet them and be like, ah, oh, man, Bird is the shit. Oh, you're going to fucking love this guy. Yeah. Did I tell you what he got me for my birthday? Slam that on them. They'll yeah. be like, whoa, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be like, yeah. Just a cool dude, man. Just a cool so dude, So funny. Man. You're going to yeah. love him. He loves running. You love running, right? And you'll be yeah. like, I love running. Yeah. You like getting naked and hitting bongos and getting high? Guess what Bert likes? Same getting shit. Getting weird as fuck, too. Yep. I'm telling you. And then Sandra Bullock, you're going to be like, you got it. Don't hard sell me. I don't want her to fall in love with me. Don't hard sell me. Just soft sell me. Sandy, wait till you meet Bert. You guys know that uh, you guys use the same bus company. That's probably a bad one. <laughs> but take your time with it. You're good. Okay. You're good at making celebrity friends. You've always been good at making celebrity friends. Okay. It's okay. probably your strong suit. Okay. Just remember, I'm bad at it. So I need you to kind of bring me with you. Okay. What I need you to do is when you do your, when your cape floats behind you, Realize I'm in the back pocket. Yeah. And then I'm going to come around and I just need you to set up the scene for me so that when I show up to Austin that first time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, this is the guy we this heard about. This is the guy. Here he's here. <laughs> you got it. You got it. All right. That's it. Thank you guys for listening and watching. And uh, we'll see you next week. Love, I love you, Bert. You. I love you. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears One Cave.